Good morning. Welcome to Legal Tender. This is the class action version of Legal Tender. Man, Man we're going to teach you guys how to be a rich old coot, and we're going <laughs> to teach you how to have your employers help you do it. And filled in front of our live audience. Our live audience They're- of one. Well, good morning, Amber. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> we are. The, we really are the power brokers here. I mean, you know, when, you, when you can bring together your dog and your wife, my sister, <laughs> I mean, you are in the halls of influence. That's why we are, our tagline for the show is the world's smallest and least influential radio show. So for those of you who are joining us, we thank you. <laughs> we, we, we might just give you a parade, all, the whole block of Brewster, one block. Love it. And if you want to come and you want to listen to our show some way, call us. You guys can come in too and you can join our one person that's watching us. Yeah. I mean, there you go. And I mean, that's the, the beauty about, you know, you know, I was, I was talking with some friends about, you know, what do I want to do with the show? What do I, what I want? Yeah. Nothing. I want to do what we're doing. I want to do what we're doing. I don't, you know, would, would, would I want to have some big contract? No, I love what we're doing. I love where we are. I love who we are. You know, I just think having, uh, having to go to some other place to do a show is different than doing it in your backyard. And so that's why we're here. We love the show. We love doing this stuff. And we love all the feedback we get. So we're going to talk today about 401ks. We're going to talk about how you might be getting screwed by your employer, right? And how employers might be getting ripped off by their plans. And how your employer probably doesn't know. And it's, it's not Almost like it's certainly don't know. I can yeah. tell you right now that if Boeing and their sophisticated counsel and all of their advisors and all of their lawyers can't get it right, you don't have it right either. Not a chance. It's not that hard. Let's talk about a guy who is, I mean, he's the Superman of these things. You know, Jerome you, Schlichter. You know what you just, the mistake you just made. You said this holy man's name without having some sort of like, <laughs> I mean, first of all, he's a lawyer, right? Actually, let's just have a moment of silence for him. <laughs> Right, right. So he's a lawyer, which normally would be, we, we'd, we'd ring the gong of death. I mean, I deal with lawyers, and I can't even tell you, I can't even, if I had a much enough, uh, if I could put all of my animosity towards lawyers into one cup, it would never fit. Uh, how about a barrel? It wouldn't work. So all of the things people say about lawyers, in large part, certainly can be true, Right. But not this guy. Not this guy. He's the savior of the masses. And we've got a judge's opinion to say it. So tell <laughs> us about Jerome. So Jerome Schlichter is the guy who has gone, who has made his entire career out of finding 401k plans where the employer has breached their duty to their employees and he sues them for it. Sues the employers for not either taking care of the money or overcharging the employees in their 401ks. And they don't realize it until the employee's like, wait a minute, I'm retired. Where'd my money go? Yeah. And across Spinning the rims. board. That's I mean, where it went, buddy. And these are, these are not small companies that he goes after either. Right. These are the Boeings of the world. He's the, the Lockheed Martin. I mean, he is amazing. Yeah, I'm looking at his picture here, and he's got this. I'm going to show it to you. He's got this incredibly <laughs> fake smile, this horrible <laughs> tight. He looks like a pit bull that you actually with, withdrew the, the food from. And he's like, I'm trying to smile. I hate this photographer. But he's <laughs> the guy, if you're the employer, you don't want to get a letter on his letterhead. Right. You do not. Right. So tell us why. why. What's, what's, this, what's the deal here? So the guy has over $300 million in settlements from corporations over their 401k plans. Okay. So he's suing companies yes. who are running 401ks. Yes. And what's interesting, the, the case he has right now out of Georgia is for small businesses. He's suing on behalf of small businesses. Hear that? The Valley, Chelan Valley, Okanagan Valley, small business. Your ear should pick up. So yeah. go ahead. Yeah. So here's the deal. If you're an employer and you have a 401k plan in your business, Mm -hmm. you are what is called a fiduciary. What in the world does that mean? That means... It's Latin for those who have faithfulness. (laughs) I mean, you're right. Hey, I've got a degree in Latin, buddy. I know something. That's all that I know. That's the extent of my knowledge. I just Googled that. I'm going to get you a t-shirt that says that. I got a degree in Latin. (laughs) Or Actually, I think better is that's the extent of my knowledge. (laughs) You know, that's what you... You know, it's funny. um, You could... The advice from a lawyer about anything, about anything that's criminal related is... Just shut up, right? Yeah. You're never going to help your case. And so a, a more favorable way to say that is, that is the extent of my knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> so put that in your spouse situation. So why are you late? Uh, because I'm not early. That is the extent of my knowledge. Thank you. See how that works out <laughs> in your marriage. I rest my case. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Is dinner ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, dinner ready. Yeah. So fiduciary, what does that mean? That means employer. Mm-hmm. That means when you're managing the 401k plan, in every single instance and in every single decision you make, you have to put the interests of your employees above your own. Period. End of story. So what does that mean? Well, here's, here's a couple of cases that demonstrate where it has gone wrong. Lockheed Martin, $62 million settlement that they won. Why did they do it? Hold on, hold on. 
$62 million. $62 million. So, you, you, first of all, Lockheed Martin, right? Major aerospace, Huge. aircraft manufacturing company. Huge. Major company. Yeah. They would have the expertise to not screw up on their plan. One would think. How many attorneys do you think uh, Lockheed Martin has that employed oh, other corporation? How many en- attorneys? Not do you- enough, apparently. <laughs> 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 oh, my gosh. So yeah. Lockheed Martin, $62 million settlement. Yeah. Did it they was, admit to wrongdoing, or is one of those settlements they say, uh, we don't admit to doing anything wrong, but do here's they a ever, truckload of cash. Do they ever admit to wrongdoing? You know, well, if you, it depends. So when you settle a case, and anytime you have a construction lawsuit dispute or a business dispute, people will sign a final document called a settlement agreement mm-hmm. or a CR2A agreement. And in there, sometimes they'll say, we admit no wrongdoing, but here's a pile of cash. <laughs> so you, no you, way. Yeah, you can, you can make the... But what they do is they also will say, we're going to keep this confidential. So they'll say it was settled for an undisclosed sum. And actually, what people write in their agreements, what I write in my agreement is, is that if you have a confidentiality clause that, set, that, that you actually you give a quote, what both sides are supposed to say when asked, mm-hmm. we had a business dispute, we reached a business resolution. That's all you can say. In the agreement, you give them a script and say, this is all you can say. So I'm sure that's what Lockheed Martin did. Probably did. But here's what they did. Here's the the actual, here's the big thing that they did. It wasn't very complicated. Lockheed Martin did. Lockheed Martin did. The people who, whoever, whoever was in charge of the 401k plan of Lockheed Martin. Jenny. Jenny was in charge. Jenny of it. did We need this. to have a name to hate. We gave Jenny two choices. You have <laughs> option A or option B. Uh-huh. They are identical. Jenny chose the option that was more expensive. That's all she did. That sounds like my wife, actually. <laughs> you walk into Nordstrom, and I'll be like, you know, A shoes or B shoes. She's going to choose which is more expensive shoe. Mm-hmm. Although subconsciously, she won't do this intentionally. I'll be like, what, what are you talking about? $200 for a pair of shoes. Do they, do they shoot things? If the answer is no, then they go the less expensive. So Jenny, going back to your deal here, she went ahead and chose expensive plan, got the same junk, right? They were, it was exactly the same. She just chose the more expensive one. And this went on for years. And it actually amounted to damages in the excess of $62 million to the employees. And so that's what they did. It wasn't complicated. So that was money that... So whenever you own a 401k, money comes out of your account to pay for these management fees, to pay for uh, lawyer's fees, to pay for... Administration fees, fees, all all this stuff, yeah. So so one of the fees that are coming out is buying these extra shares from, from the exact same... Exact same stuff, they're buying it and they're paying more for it. Yeah, exactly the same. There is, I'm looking actually at a chart right now from one of St. Jerome. You know, by the way, the, Jerome, the lawyer's name is J- Jerome Sch- uh, Schlich- Schlichter, how do you say it? I, I think I Schlichter, don't I don't, that's what okay. I Okay, well, uh, Jerome, of course, he was the one who translated the Hebrew Bible into the Latin Vulgate. St. Jerome, huh? <laughs> so there might be some <laughs> sort of coincidence here between the hero of the Latin Vulgate, or Vulgate, as they say... <laughs> Do you think in St. Jerome? Do you think when he walks in the office in the morning, all the employees stand and bow? I can guarantee you, I've, I've worked at firms like this. He walks in and people say to themselves, I hate the way that he walks. I hate that he smells. I hate the way he comes his hair. I hate the way he shoes. I hate, the, I, hate the, I hate everything about this place. That's guaranteed what they're saying. But, the thing, but I love the money. But he's the haymaker. <laughs> I love the money. He's the haymaker. He makes it rain. Yeah. And there was, they'll say it. Like in big firms, big law firms, they'll do it. Mm-hmm. They'll say, don't upset the golden goose. <laughs> they'll have the a golden partner- goose. Yeah, they'll have a partnership meeting, and you'll be saying like, "Hey, so and so is an idiot. Look what he's doing." And they'll say, shh, 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 shh. "Don't upset the golden goose." Okay. Remember, where do the eggs come from? <laughs> I'm like, I don't care where the eggs come from. He's an idiot. The guy's a crazy person. <laughs> <laughs> he stood up in a table in a deposition and threw a bag of chips at somebody. <laughs> and like, well, it was, it was a good point. It was a good, I remember that story. That yeah. was a great story. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll tell the story now. I mean, I went to a, and this was one of my mentors. I love, I love this guy. He, and, and literally, I mean. A I, true crazy man, though. I mean, he was, he was a crazy guy. He was. He was a crazy guy. Brilliant crazy. Brilliant crazy guy. And he's, he's deceased now. But I went to a National Institute of Trial Lawyers conference where they teach you about depositions. And they told three stories of, of lawyers that are called obstreperous. And that's an actual legal term for, you know, just a pig. And two of the stories at this national conference, I knew were this guy that was my mentor. And I loved them both. <laughs> One of which, he, he actually came in and threw chips. It was a fantastic story. Loved the whole thing. And very effective. The case settled when he walked out of the room. Because the other lawyer was so upset about what had happened. And so offended, right? The case settled. Which had nothing to do with the legal reason. Which shows you, when, you, when you're in the middle of a battle of a lawsuit, 
or a marriage, you're not playing the game. You're playing the man on the other side of the table or the woman, as the case may be. Yeah, so chew loud chips. I like it. Chew loud chips. I love it. So, so St. Jerome's showing up his deal. Oh, I, I, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Boeing. Boeing was the other one that got dinged. Oh. And, I, you know, everyone, everyone knows what Boeing is. What did they get dinged for? Do you know? Did you, did no. You, yeah. No, no. They got dinged because they were paying the administrative person too much money to administer the plan. You know what that means? No. They were paying the person who does all the record keeping, reports all the taxes, does all the a transfer. A person or a company? A company. It was oh, a co- okay. They were paying a company, I'm sure it was. Right. They weren't doing anything special. Uh-huh. There were just other options out there that did the exact same thing that were cheaper, and they chose not to go with those companies, so they paid more money. Well, you got dinged 50, what was it, $57 million. Okay, so guaranteed. I, I, I shouldn't say guaranteed. What I suspect <laughs> is, that, is that the reason why the Boeing, you know, why they chose that company to administer their plan is because they were buddies. They played basketball. They went to Gonzaga together. How could anything go wrong, <laughs> right? <laughs> and so that's how they chose, guaranteed. That's how this business was chosen. And what happened is they just got hammered and the lawyers got paid. <laughs> I mean, that's a story we I mean, can all get behind. Okay. How much do you think is firm made on a $57 million? One third. Guaranteed. Actually, let me read you a quote from one of these judges. This is phenomenal. So this guy, St. Jerome. (laughs) St. Jerome. He he got this. uh, He ended up suing a -a rent-a-center. And this judge ended up saying that he was, uh, that it was, his impact was like the Lone Ranger. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and it said that he has made the most compelling case I have ever heard. I mean, phenomenal, right? That is this amazing. This is the judge. This yeah. is the judge who said... Have you he, ever heard a judge say that about an attorney ever in your life? Never. Never. Not if they weren't on the bribe. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> that's different. I'm still waiting to the point in my life when I can be bribed. I mean, that's how you know you've actually achieved something in life. That's how you know you're dangerous. Yeah, right. You know, ooh. ooh you know, we're paying him off. I, I only need like five bucks. <laughs> I mean, I'm really cheap just to be bribed. I just wanted somebody to say like, hey, I'll give you five bucks not to do this. Yes, I have ar- I've arrived. I'll put that on a shirt. Package a jerky and you got a deal. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, uh, so this, this case, actually, I want to read you a couple things. So I'm looking at this current class action lawsuit in Georgia. And by the way, we're gonna, for those of you who are listening, we're going to bring this home to your 401k plan. So what you can do to make sure that this is not happening to you, both as an employee and the employer. Okay. What's happening in Georgia right now is the same type of deal where they're saying that, hey, you could choose the plan that we've been using. And this was, a, it was the, the index is PVCAX. And the BPS, the, what is that again? Basis points. The basis points. Yeah. The plan fee is 117 Basis points. That's 117, so that's 1.17%. Versus by the same stuff from a different company that didn't play basketball Gonzaga for this PSVIC, same thing for 77 basis points. So in other words, 52% less. So you employees were paying 52% more. Why? Because your employer or the employer's administrator played baseball with a guy who went to Gonzaga. (laughs) And so that's what they chose. Yeah, and so here's... You know, people say, well, is it just the employer's problem? I was like, no, it's actually, there's two problems. The employees have a problem and the employers have a problem. The employees problem, they're not paying they're it. ripped off. They're not paying attention. Yeah. They're not paying, oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, because let me tell That's you a story. That's compelling. I'm feeling convicted right you here. You should feel convicted because I actually had a guy call, a guy I know calls me, says, hey, they're making a giant change at work on our 401k plan. He goes, he goes, can I send you the stuff so you can look at it so I can ask some good questions? Whoa, good for him. Ask sure. questions. Whoa, so he up? sends it to me and he sent me the old one and the new one. I looked at him and I go, I called him back within 10 minutes and I go, here's the deal. They're actually choosing a plan for you that is going to cost you more money. Yes. And I said, so here's what I want you to do. Who, where does that money, who gets that money? <laughs> you, you I want go, to meet that guy. Yeah. So he goes in, I go, and here's, get all your coworkers behind you on this. Tell them what's going on. Yeah. And so you guys are all going to go in the meeting with your, the advisor guy who's selling you guys this plan, and you're <laughs> going to ask him all these questions. So I gave him all <laughs> the questions asked. He said, the guy started sweating profusely. Yes. And I go, because here's the deal. This would not stand up in court. There's no way that this would stand up because you cannot. I mean, there's just unless you have a very good you're reason. Pay more for the same stuff. You, you're not. They're not pay getting more. anything special. So he goes in. Here's what happened. The, the, everyone got so upset that they were getting charged more. The employees started complaining to the boss and their yes. boss's boss. Yes. The company changed their whole matching structure to appease the employees. What? 
What? They don't change the whole thing. I don't know if this and that was just terrorists or genius. I love it. <laughs> and that was just because one person was paying attention uh-huh. to what was going on. Because mo- I mean, come on, most people when you make changes at work, they're like, okay, whatever, check, 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 sign, moving yeah. on with my life, right? Right, right? But at the end of the day, this is your money. You know, I was talking to some guys. Uh, they were um, a chemical a chemical production company. They gave chemicals to ag to farmers, and they had their plant administrator who was showing up from the big company from Atlanta driving up in this $140,000 Mercedes. And he's like, you know, it wasn't the Mercedes that bothered me because I knew he was making money off my plan. It was the fact it was the watch. <laughs> I didn't know what it was. So I looked at it and then I wrote it down and Googled it and realized this guy comes in with a $50,000 watch mm-hmm. and we're selling chemicals to farmers here. And I was like, what in the world? And I'm like, go see Cody. Go see Cody. Go see Cody. <laughs> so, That's a nice watch. <laughs> yeah, I know. Nice watch. You don't even have a watch. <laughs> nope. Yeah. Oh, so, man. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. So if someone gets, uh, if someone gets dinged with a lawsuit and they go, what? I didn't know. I, did, I, I didn't know that I was supposed to do that. Is that- I didn't know she was underage. <laughs> does the law care? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Does, does the law care? Here's the problem. If you're a fiduciary, right, mm. you have to be faithful. Mm. That means you got to pay attention. And saying, I don't know, is not an excuse. you got to be on the ball. So mm. if you're an employer, right, these sharks are coming. Uh, St. Jerome's turning into the evil little shark here. He's coming along. He's, he's looking for you. Mm. Small and medium-sized businesses. Here's what I think is going to happen. Here's what I think is going to happen. You know, there's all these websites that do all this analysis on 401k plans. Uh-huh. I, I know that it's coming down the road. There is some lawyer is going to come up with an, an idea of searching 401k plans. He's going to search for all the plans that haven't made changes forever. Yeah. And then he's same gonna, stuff. They have, they've offered the same stuff since they have the plan. Same person's doing it. Same, same, sure. same, we, same, we, same. We've done that together. We actually, we've looked at local businesses and looked at their f- published 401k plans. And we're like, wow, that is, n- those guys got exposure. These people have exposure, so on and so forth. And so yeah. it, it does happen to people locally here. So the point is you should be paying attention, right? Yeah, because here's what happens with the employer. They want to be able to offer the 401k plan so they can attract employees, right? They're checking the box off so they can do this. Yeah. And then they hand it off to some, probably an HR person or somebody to handle the oversight of it. And then they move on with their lives. Right. But how does the HR person know what they're... I mean, do you know all the laws in ERISA? No. <laughs> Nobody knows all the laws in <laughs> ERISA right. unless you're in Nobody the industry. Nobody does, right? I mean, you, you have to really do due See, diligence. This is the problem. So I, I was a lifeguard when I was in high school. And I love that you're going for one case lifeguards. Go. Well, you, so, and here was the problem. I w- looked at the other lifeguards. They're all tanning, their sunglasses. And I'm sitting there just sweating. I mean, palpitating. I'm 18. And I'm thinking, I am the guard of life. I am the guard of life. <laughs> you nearly choked. I just about spit my drink out. I am the lifeguard. <laughs> and I'm so stressed out going, which are they going to go? Which are they going to go? I'm looking all around, you know, worrying about kids dying on my watch. But I was like, this, I'm horrible for this. You're the only one there. All the rest of the lifeguards there were just there getting sleeping. a suntan. Yeah, they had the little tinfoil, the 1980s tinfoil <laughs> thing up like that, you know, with the white sunglasses. Amber, did you ever have the tinfoil thing so you could shine the light? No, didn't have it. Okay. <laughs> well, so the plant administrator is your money guard. And think about it. You will shop online for days to save like $100 on a garage set like uh, cabinets, right? For days. And yet you're leaving tens of thousands of dollars in fees over the term of your policy. You're just leaving there. Mm-hmm. What are you doing? You're not getting anything. Because here's the, here's the dirty little secret of 401k plans. Sounds like a good I, intro to book. Go ahead. I know. Everybody thinks... Or medicine. Uh, like, I mean, this is probably true. This is doctors. probably true in the investment world anyway. Uh-huh. Everyone thinks they've got a guy. <laughs> I've got a guy, yeah. you know, my guy, and they have an edge over all of their friends and everyone else because they've got a guy. It's called insider trading. No, you don't. <laughs> Chances are, no, you don't. Uh-huh. And your 401k plan offers nothing special. I don't care who administers it. I don't care where your investments Same are. Stuff. It offers nothing special. So why would you pay more for it? Why? Well, because, because like I said, you played basketball with your buddy and you want to have a good time. Here we, you go. Here's some money. We've been childhood friends. You know, it's funny. I, you th- think about it, I, was, uh, I did lots of construction litigation in Seattle. And uh, I remember I had a well-known doctor who had a contractor, a buddy of his, and had given this bid. And it was like $50,000 over the next two other responsible contractors. And he's like, oh, how do I tell him? I had him do this. And I said, well, how about this? Why don't you just write him a check for 40000 Write him a check for 40000 and say, I love you. I'm glad we're friends. Here's, there you go. And he goes, why would I do that? Well, 
because you're going to do it the same the same work, right? Same stuff. Yeah. Write them a check for forty thousand, and you save ten grand. Mm-hmm. I said, well, I, I don't I don't want to do that. How about ten thousand? Well, why don't I just give him money? <laughs> I said, that's my point. <laughs> why would you just give him money? Yeah. And I said, go away, think about it, and here's yeah. my bill. <laughs> yeah. Because here's the deal. These people who are invi- advising these 401k plans, how often do they probably, if you are in a 401k plan, the guy who's advising you, does, number one, he what doesn't live next to you. He probably lives in the nearest big city he away she, from you. Jenny, remember? Maybe, sorry, yes. True. Right. And they come around once, maybe twice a year, and what do they do? They give you the giant presentation, they take your boss out to lunch, yep. and they move on with their life. Why would you pay them more money to have them do that? You're picking the investments anyway. Bingo. You're choosing where you put yep. your money. Yep. Why would you pay this person more? For a that's nice what salad. this guy. A really nice salad and mutton sandwich. Yeah. Fantastic. And that's what St. Jerome's doing. <laughs> What's, what are some of the websites you can look at to see how your 401k plan performs? Yeah, the first one that I would go to is Brightscope. Bright, Brightscope. Brightscope.com. Okay. You can actually go in there, you All can right. type in in your company and they'll pull up it's not true for they don't have every, every single company has a 401k plan okay, most I'm, of them I'm, if I you're a decent size right they have your plan on there uh-huh. and they've given your plan a score yes yeah, nice zero to 100 and they'll actually tell you where your plan scores and where you actually score relative to your peers and then they do a really scary calculation okay. they do a calculation that says your 401k plan the difference between your 401k plan and the uh-huh. top rated ones is an additional X number of years of work and X number oh, of dollars. Hurts. Like, for instance, there are some local plans that I've looked at where you actually will have to work an extra 10 years and it's going to cost you $200,000. That's the difference between where your plan performs and where the top rated plans perform. That's the difference. So in other That's words, terrible. The grass is actually greener. The grass is, <laughs> it is greener. It, it, it is greener. Uh, yeah, mm. I, just, I just went to the uh, website right there and just typed in a couple different companies. And their comp- some local companies, they pop up. You can see how they perform. But that's what I would be wanting to do. I mean, if... Now, here's the thing. I recognize that if you're a farmer, you have no intention to retire. Right? Never. My, grand, no. my dad's a farmer. Granddad's a farmer. Great-granddad a farmer. Great-great-granddad. By the way, did you know that my great-great-grandfather built Highway 97 from Wenatchee to Chelan? No, but that is awesome. It is awesome. It is awesome. He actually... Yeah. So he... Uh, what was I talking about this? Oh, yeah. Worked until the day he died. I remember talking to my granddad, Harris. And I was like, Harris, geez, you're 91 years old. When are you going to retire? And he said, well, I don't want to die. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Harris, <laughs> look at Look at You know, you're, you're busted down. Look at your busted down knee here, buddy. And, uh, and he's like, well, the second I stop working, I'm going to die. I said, well, I'm, don't, don't you die? And then you stop working the other way around, you know. But so there's some people who, you know, who want to continue to work. Right? Right. There are other people, right? I got another friend, Special Force soldier. He's been counting down his retirement days since the first year he joined the Army. Okay, so I guess <laughs> there are brand new apps on your phone. Yes. The countdown apps. They'll tell you down to the second of when you can retire. Yes. All you right. just put in yeah. your day and you just look on it. It'll give you alerts every day and tell you how many days oh, or yeah. hours. I, I talk to my buddy. I'm like, hey, so when you retire? retiring? He's like, four years, six months. I'm like, what in the world? How do you know that? Like, right off the top of your head. Yeah. Like, what'd you have for breakfast? Uh, but you ask him when he's going to retire. So there's two. Two different kinds of people. And if you're the kind of person that wants to pay the money manager more money so they can have more rims, don't get me wrong. Good for you. <laughs> just write <laughs> them a check. Wrong. When you're there, write your lawyer check too. Just, just write them a blank check. Right? And say, I'm just, Here's actually, some I, rims. Just to, I just want to play the cash register stand opening right now. I know. We need a cash register Dang stand. It. Right. So, so if, if that's not you, if you don't want to just work more and have less, mm-hmm. then they should probably you should probably do something. Yeah. So here's the deal. But I'm not judging if you don't. Yeah. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> you know? So here's the deal. If you're an employee and you are unsure, get on, do some research. There's tons of 401k websites. You can do some research on your plan. Right. If you're paying over 1% of whatever you have in there every year in fees, you need to do some talking to whoever's okay, running your plan. Okay, 1%. 1%. Okay. All right. That's an easy benchmark. Yeah. So, I mean, because there, there are so many options out there now because of these people like Jerome Schlichter who have done single-handedly driven down the amount it has cost to administer these plans because... People don't want to get sued, right? People yeah. don't want to pay the, all this money. You know, and I've been reading that some commentators on the, the legal side of things about, well, these plans, the, the, the lawsuit hasn't been tested. We don't know the validity of it. Hey, buddy, if you're paying a $50 million settlement, you have exposure, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, if, if these big entities have exposure, then you probably do too. Yes. So just clean it up. I mean, it's not like these employers or employees are wanting to lose money and pay it to other people. Just figure it out. Fix it. I came up with actually a list of questions for the employer. Okay, sure. And these are actually really boring. 
but you should care about them because you know who does care about them? No. The lawyers. The lawyers. Ooh. The lawyers care I about I was going to say the, the judge? <laughs> because if you, can't, if you can't check these boxes and you haven't done all of this, mm-hmm. you have exposure. Period. End of story. And exposure meaning your financial pants are down. That type of exposure. I mean, you watch out. Exactly The lawyers right. are coming. Exactly in right. Mercedes. The, the tide's going out, and you're going to get caught with your pants down. That's okay. exactly all what right. I'm saying. So can you document all the particular funds in your plan and why they were chosen? Every single one of them. Can you say why they were chosen? Why they okay. were chosen. Are their fees reasonable? Because are there we other, play basketball together. Why, exactly why, right. Why, yeah. uh, are there other funds that offer the exact same thing but are cheaper? Have you done research on those? Can you document the research that you've done? <laughs> Can you document? Can you document? Have you done any documentation about Snikes, why you're doing now it? Now you've caught me. <laughs> I was able to go forward until you, you came up with, actually, I had to prove what I was doing. How's the performance of each of the funds? Are they performing as they should? According to who? I called the manager. He said it was great. Exactly. Fantastic. Do you have documentation of phone. actually research you've done? Right. Do you, have, uh, do, you have, do you understand all your fiduciary duties? Do you understand all of them? No. That's a great not. question. You know, what is a fiduciary? That's, yeah. that's a scary thing that courts are saying that, that you as employers have. Scary. Yeah. What are you paying people your service provider, your administrative person, to what do all this? What are you paying this? them? What are you paying them? Is it competitive? Are there other firms that offer the same thing at yeah, a cheaper price? Yeah, it's true. There have been, been lawsuits where people have been paying their managers more money than they should have been, and they, they, they got sued for the delta of, the, of the, uh, that salary. This is what happened to Boeing. They were paying one of their service providers yep. too much. And there were other options, exactly the same, that could have done it at less cost. Yep, so Could've, put it out the buddy you went skiing with instead. Like, hey, we went skiing. <laughs> Let's just see what you got. <laughs> see what you got. Oh, your fees are horrible. Yeah. So, have you gone out and got quotes from other service providers? To, to do your, have you okay. gone out and got quotes? Do you have those quotes? Because if you can't document all this stuff and you have a problem and you get a knock knock at your door from an attorney who said, "We've had a complaint. Can you sh- uh-huh. show me all this stuff?" and you go, "Well, no." You know, I don't like this relationship that you're building here, Cody. I like the relationship of trust, right? Where it's exactly. just like, "I'm just, I'm doing great. Don't, don't look behind the curtain. Don't, 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 don't do it." And so, you know, your buddy playing basketball, Gonzaga. This example yeah. that you done. Here's the thing. Or Seattle, you. Yeah. Ever. So within your plan documents. Do you sh- have you do you have documentation about how you guys are getting around or not committing conflicts of interest? And have you documented it? And so have you? You mean with the people that you're doing business with? How is it not a conflict? How am I not getting kicked? How are you? Yeah. And if you find a conflict, how do you resolve it in the investor's favor, your employees? Because that's who you're, you're a fiduciary. It has uh-huh. to be for them. Right, right. So when you resolve it, it has to be in their favor. Do you have documentation? Yeah. For that? I mean, so so to non lawyers and to non CFAs. A conflict sounds like, you know, like a dispute, but a conflict is when you have two represented parties with two opposing interests, and you're not allowed as a lawyer to represent those two parties. All kinds of ethics rules, but you're saying the same type of fiduciary rules apply. Exactly right. So if you don't have the answers to these questions, get out the checkbook and start writing them to St. Jerome. <laughs> I mean, he needs, this guy needs another jet, right? <laughs> or, or... You better wake up. I mean, that's what you're saying. This is a wake-up call. Yeah, they're just... They're, I guarantee you, I mean, you could probably go down to any 401k within a couple hundred miles of here, and you could probably find holes in a lot of these questions mm, that sure. need to be sewed up. Well, anyway, this is uh, Legal Tano. Thank you for joining us. You can watch us live on uh, ltmedia.tv. We're still looking for our intern. We're still looking for... We're doing our six-week search for an intern. We're going to be going to a couple local high schools. We're going to be doing some live shows there. We're going to make fun of them there, right then and there. We're going to talk about... One show we're going to talk about is... Why you shouldn't be a parent in high school. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that, I'm just that saying. That is a great topic. And we're going to talk about all of the problems that you and I have. Right? You have three kids. I have four kids, right? Yeah. We're going to talk about all of the horrors, the parade of horrors that happens when you're allegedly an adult. I guarantee you that parents are listening to this go, I'm going to make sure my kid is in school that day. There You, oh, you better get to school. You son. need to listen up. <laughs> all right. So you can send us an email. But again, you can see us at ltmedia.tv. See ya.